Thank you very much. Um, uh, morning, everyone. Just about morning. Um, hope you're all well. Hope you've had a good uh, session. Um, I guess, just as way of introduction, that was a very long and, and lovely introduction, but sometimes, not every day, I think I've got the best job in the world um, because I work for arguably the biggest brand in the world, and, you know, I'm choosing to ignore sort of Google and Apple and people like that. Um, but I'm also working in the biggest market in the world. And I think that kind of sense of scale and impact is just brilliant. Um, but also, I mean, there's lots of us that work at Coke in China, but I'm specifically sort of tasked with creating stories uh, for the Coca-Cola company. And as you can imagine, we've been around for 129 years now. Um, we have loads and loads of stories. So I've got this sort of really interesting job, and it's also quite easy-ish because I've got lots of stuff to talk about. Um, so I'm just going to play you a video, hopefully, um, which just tells a little bit of our stories. This is a bit of content we ran last year uh, in China. The world is full of facts that surprise you. For example, did you know that in 1985, Coca-Cola became the first soft drink consumed in space? Here's another one. Any melody ever written can be recreated with only 12 Coca-Cola bottles. Did you know this charming look of good old Santa was created in 1931 by Coca-Cola? And that today, you can buy a Coke in over 200 countries around the world? Did you know that Coca-Cola has been a partner of the Olympic Games since 1928? That's longer than any other brand. Hey, Mr. Paula Bear. Did you know that the perfect temperature to drink a Coke is at three degrees? I don't know about you, but for us, that's deliciously cold. Here's another amazing fact. Did you know Coca-Cola is the second most understood term in the world? Just after, okay? And did you know that every day people share 1.8 billion servings of the Coca-Cola company products around the world? A bottle of Coke was as delicious and refreshing for our grandfather's generation as it is for our generation, and sure will be for those to come. In fact, did you know that Coca-Cola has been around since 1886? It was invented by Dr. John Pemberton in a time when people lived a simpler life. Now 127 years later, it deliciously uplifts billions around the world. Okay, so lots of facts there. And I, I you know, I, I discover these new facts. I didn't know, for example, that we were the first um, foreign brand to advertise on TV in China back in 1981 or something. Um, we were the first people to ever do uh, trade, you know, trade promotions in China, again, back in the early 80s. So um, wonderful, wonderful brand, wonderful stories and, and, and lots of, of things to talk about. But why are stories important? Um, and I guess I'm going to get into trouble here because I've got my media agency here as well. But um, stories are, are really important because, as we all know, the world is changing, China is changing even faster than the world. Um, and I think just a couple of points that, that are, for me, really interesting is that China is now the most socially engaged market in the world, right? So much more socially engaged than Korea or Japan uh, and Asia, which we traditionally think as being kind of at the forefront of things. Um, so China is very uh, socially engaged. This is my controversial stats, but it's true. Um, people are spending more time on digital, and our audiences, our, our people are spending more time on digital than on TV. Um, and I think what's, you know, a logical business kind of point to make here is that media inflation is growing faster than our marketing budgets, right? So we can't just keep on doing the same thing and expect to get sort of better results. Uh, it's not going to work. So we need to change, which I think is the point of this slide. And you've all seen this quote, but about the definition of insanity. Um, I'm going to show you uh, <laughs> you were was it you talking about Mr. Bean earlier? Um, so same actor, but different role to make this point. Now, Field Marshal Haig has formulated a brilliant new tactical plan to ensure final victory in the field. Ah, would this brilliant plan involve us climbing out of our trenches and walking very slowly towards the enemy, sir? <laughs> How could you possibly know that, Blackadder? It's classified information. <laughs> It's the same plan that we used last time, and the 17 times before that. It, it, exactly! And that is what is so brilliant about it. It will catch the watchful Han totally off guard. Doing precisely what we've done 18 times before is exactly the last thing they'll expect us to do this time. There is, however, one small problem. 
that everyone always gets slaughtered in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> That's right. And Field Marshal Haig is worried that this may be depressing the men attached. <laughs> He's looking to find a way to cheer them up. Well, his resignation and suicide would seem the obvious. <laughs> That always confuses people in China because they just don't get that it's Mr. Bean. Anyway, um, the whole point is obviously we have to we have to change. We need to evolve. Um, it's absolutely mandatory. Um, and you know, at Coke, we've obviously been um, fairly innovative. This is an innovation forum, so uh, we've been fairly good at, at innovating. And I think over the years, I won't go through the sort of theory behind this, but we're evolving to a platform which puts storytelling at the heart of everything that we do. Um, and it is, and I'll explain to you in a, in a while, but it's not just storytelling for the sake of storytelling. There is purpose behind it, and I'll show you a few examples of this. Ooh. Um, so we call this liquid and linked, um, and I think it's, it's quite a, uh, an accepted framework now. Liquid, obviously, because we are a beverage company, um, but also because we believe that all our ideas, our stories need to be liquid. They need to evolve. They need to kind of find their own little way, through, uh, like a stream would through, through a mountain. But they need to be linked. So it's not just about kind of doing wacky, crazy stuff and hoping for the best. They need to be linked back to what our business objectives are, what our partners want to do, and so on and so forth. So first of all, um, it's all about stories, um, and stories can be content, you know, and I, I, I've got content in my job title, but I hate the word, um, because I just think it's overused. Um, I think, you know, content is a part of it, and content that comes from us, from marketers, is a huge part of it. Um, but experiences, I think, are, are, are very often forgotten about. Um, so the experience of when I drink a Coke or, and I, you know, and it's a good experience and I write about it, I tell my friends about it, that's an experience that, that can be just as valuable as anything else. Um, and finally, um, th th those experiences can fuel conversations um, around our brands. So uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. I'll talk to you about spread with some stuff which you should, Sylvia should be talking about, really, um, which is about our media principles and finally uh, how, how we create value uh, beyond just for ourselves but to, to the whole system. So um, stories. I think everyone recognizes him. Um, you know, stories are something that just last forever. You know, uh, good stories like this story has, has stood the test of time. It's been very, very powerful. And I think we need to be careful here, again, going back to kind of content. But, you know, good content can be very good and very powerful and help your brands and help your businesses. Bad content just gets forgotten uh, tomorrow, right? Um, so I think, you know, when we're, we're talking about storytelling, we need to have that lens of, um, of quality. I think Graham is going to talk this afternoon about the importance of, you know, in this world of doing everything really, really quickly, the importance of craft and things like that. So um, that would be a good talk this afternoon. But um, these stories are our currency. I've lost... Uh, sorry. Um, but stories help to explain the inexplicable. You know, there's a lot of magic that goes on, and, and stories help to explain that. They help to build belief around ourselves and our brands. They help to preserve knowledge, um, to deliver inspiration, unleash our imagination, um, and, and create awe, right? Some of our stories are, are truly awe-inspiring. Um, stories can be timeless. I have three children, two, two, two very young girls, that, and it's amazing that you know, their favorite Disney movies are actually the old ones that were written 60 years ago, and you know, doesn't, no CG or anything like that. Um, but it's amazing that these stories, you know, the amount of money that we spend on Disney stuff and apps and just whatever, because down to stories that were created 60, 70 years ago. So it's, it's amazing the power of this if you can get it, if you can get it right. Um, now, obviously today, uh, we all have, most of you are, some of you are looking at your mobile phone and not listening to me, but um, some of you, uh, uh, we've all got mobile phones in our pockets, and um, we're all basically, because of technology, becoming storytellers. And that can be fantastically good, and it can also be very dangerous, because, you know, you could all be writing, uh, hopefully writing, you know, what a wonderful presentation I'm giving, or you could be saying, God, this guy's full of crap, and um, it could be very damaging. And I think the point is, is that, you know, with this, this new generation of storytellers, you need to be very, very careful about the kind of stories that you want to generate from them. 
I mean, someone from PR over there, but I think you know exactly uh, what I mean. Um, and in China, you know, again, we're the most socially connected, socially active market in the world, and we have a lot of people, right? So it, when done right, this can be very, very powerful for um, telling our stories, building our brands, meeting our business objectives. It can also go the other way, as, as, as we know very well. Um, now, luckily, storytelling is absolutely part of the DNA of, of Coca-Cola. Um, and I'm just going to share with you some of our stories now, because the important thing here is they're not advertising campaigns. They're not sort of things that we just kind of switch on and then switch, forget about and switch off. Um, these are actually stories, and they, 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 they last the test of time. So um, if anyone's had the great pleasure <laughs> of going to Atlanta, um, there is, there's a museum there, um, and like lots of brands have, have museums, right? But we actually charge, I think it is 12 US dollars to go into the Coca-Cola museum and spend, you know, sort of three hours or something there. Um, and millions of people do this every year. So we actually make money out of brainwashing people even more, uh, which is fantastic. But I think it just shows the kind of the desire of people when, when there's so much to, to tell um, of doing that. Um, Santa Claus. Um, Santa Claus, you're German, right? So anyway, Santa, well, he kind of started in Germany somewhere in the forests. Um, and he was green. He was, you know, he was a forest guy. He was dressed in green to be camouflaged and hunt dwarves or whatever they did then. Um, but uh, back in the 20s, we decided that Santa Claus is obviously a very powerful spokesman for the brand. And he's free because he's dead and old and everything. Um, so we actually changed him into... Red. Um, and so we started some, some really wonderful, actually, and if you go to Atlanta, you can see the original, uh, the original advertising uh, drawings. Um, but we obviously changed them to red because that's Coca-Cola's colors. Um, and over time, because we used them so much, Santa became red. Um, and now he's accepted as a red person, but he was originally a green uh, saint, for saint, saint Klaus um, from, from Germany. Um, the bottle, so everyone recognizes this shape, I think. Um, it's actually, it launched 100 years ago. Um, it's actually, we're in the middle of our centenary celebration of this incredible, iconic piece of packaging. And I think, you know, yesterday you, you, you went through some packaging uh, talks and discussions. Um, but this hasn't changed, really, for 100 years. And obviously, technology has developed and, you know, things like plastic have come along. Um, but if you look at that as this is an iconic kind of bottle, and, and obviously we can say so much around this, we use the shape uh, in all of our advertising. I'll show you some stuff uh, in a minute, which kind of again takes that shape and takes that on further. Um, but incredi uh, incredibly powerful, and again, not an ad advertisement campaign, not not kind of you know marketing in its traditional sense, but something that's very very durable and, and has been around for a long time. Um, the secret formula. Uh, which you can go and, and sort of have a look at it in the, in the vault in Atlanta. Um, but again, what a wonderful piece of marketing, right? I mean, anyone who Googles or Bings, whatever you're allowed to do now, um, the, the secret formula, you, it's not that secret. I mean, it's out there on the internet and there's been court cases and da da da. But we maintain this whole kind of incredible um, mystique uh, around the secret formula. Because it's secret, therefore, it must be delicious, brilliant, amazing, all the rest of it. And it's something that's very much part of the mystery behind the, the, the Coke brand and something that we, we obviously want to maintain um, for a long time. So as I was saying, these are not moments, you know, these are not kind of advertising campaigns. These aren't just kind of stuff that we'll spend, uh, you know, tens of millions of RMB on, on putting out on TV. These are actually stories that have been around for as long as we've been around, some of them. Um, and that makes them very, very powerful. Um, stories, we can use them in lots of different ways. Um, we do a lot of, of work at Coke on, on what we call um, a point of view advertising. Um, so it's something that we've done globally. It's something that we've started doing in China. Um, last year, we did something about uh, migrant kids and kind of the importance uh, during CNY of actually not letting your kids you know, stay at home by themselves, but actually going back and seeing them. And it was very, very powerful. Um, this, some of the, you might have seen this this year. We ran this around CNY um, as a piece of content, which um, I, uh, someone always cries in the room. It's really weird. Anyway. Maybe 
，这么长时间不知道该怎么去相处。这么长时间估计不去聊了，估计就十天差不多就够了。从小就喜欢听我拉小提琴，所以呢，我会天天拉给他听，他非常可爱。我到他的工作的，他这个地方呢，我看他到底是怎么工作的，弥补一下我们对他所少做的那些东西。干我们混混这行，起早贪黑的，但是因为自己喜欢嘛，所以心里家也无所谓。来北京就想赚钱学习摄影，嗯，刚赚的一万多块钱的学费，前段时间把人家客户的东西给弄丢了嘛。我爸脾气有点大，还不知道怎么跟他们说呢。今年有个比赛嘛，不努力拿不到好的名次。我从地勤转到工程以后，我妈就变得特别唠叨，嗯，还经常劝我转行什么的，我不愿意跟他们多聊这个事儿。呃，没告诉他，就是我做快递员这个事儿，跟他们说我是摄影师嘛。我特希望我妈就是做错事儿别当众就是说我，你能经常来看看我。又来了，又来了，天津女儿，你们看她寄的东西，寄了好几年了，每天都寄，每天都寄，几点起飞，几点着陆，天天就是为了这个女儿。因为你老不在身边，你偶尔回来呢，妈妈就不知道怎么去表达对你的爱。爸爸妈妈很亏欠，他琢磨干，他也是为了这个前途。呃，也别记恨我，呃。Very powerful, and I think you know we we, we always talk about um, and there's always someone that cries, <laughs> but we always talk about the you know the the differences in generations、uh, in China.、Um, all my Chinese colleagues, you know, are always are、oh, Chinese New Year, boring. I have to go home and eat too much, and you know it's blah 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 blah. But actually, what we wanted to do this Chinese year was just be a little bit provocative, and kind of. Point out that it's an incredibly precious time of your lives that your parents and and you know when I first saw this、uh, when it was finished you know it kind of just got me thinking God you know here I am living in China my parents I hardly see them and da 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 you know it's got me going as well but、uh, it, it's this kind of having these point of views、um, and you might say it's very different from our normal very happy uplifting kind of、um, communications. But it really kind of touched the nerve and, and really worked in terms of, of speaking to people beyond just kind of trying to sell products、um, to them. So,、um, yeah, so it's amazing. This this is actually quite old now; it's a couple of years old. But I just want to share two examples. When you start inspiring people with you know that the word content、uh, to the degree so much, they start creating their own stuff, and that's kind of gold, right? So the two examples here have, have had nothing to do with us. We didn't spend any money on it,、um, but stuff that was 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 shared on social media. This, these were both on Weibo, back when Weibo was big. Um, but um, so someone went to the trouble of writing a bit of a love letter to his girlfriend, but using lots and lots of cocoa imagery. So the, what we call the dynamic ribbon there. So it's on all of our packaging、uh, in our hair. So you know, when I was 15, your smile lit up my gloomy world. When I was 17, I said I'll marry you, with the the ring pull. When I was 18, we fought for our future and lived at opposite ends of the earth. So I think that's. Shanghai and Sydney.、Um, when I was 25, I honoured the commitment I made when I was 17,、uh, and again with the sort of ribbon,、uh, which is part of our, our brand identity.、Uh, by your side, I can face every unpredictable、uh, tomorrow, and you can see the the、uh, iconic Coke bottle in the sort of the sunlight there.、Uh, 
Um, every single, and it was funny, it actually gave, we're talking about innovation, but this guy actually gave us an idea, uh, which was we could go and start creating wedding packs, you know. Um, so it was like free advertising and free innovation. Fantastic. Um, someone else, um, I think inspired by the first one actually. Um, so this was again using a lot of the, uh, the iconic contour bottle. Uh, so even with just one coin, we shared fun together. A set of Toriyama books brought joy to our whole class. We had to scrape our coins to, just to buy a Coke and we shared it with each other. Uh, your very first love letter brought an enriching experience. Until graduation caused us to part ways, we share memories that no one can take away. So using the, 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 the bottle uh, shape all the way through all of these imageries. Um, that time may have distanced us, but that can never erase our memories of being close friends. Um, so really, really great, right? If you're a marketer and, and you're, having, you're facing you know, expensive agencies and uh, you know, rising media costs and all that kind of stuff, people doing this for free for you is, is obviously gold. Um, so they, they just some, some of our stories. I, I'm going to talk to you now a little bit about how we get stories to kind of take off and move. Um, and I won't dwell too much into this, um, but I think you know, we know that the landscape is changing. So back in the days of, of when things were easy, uh, in the 1980s, there was like, you know, I grew up in, the, in, in Europe where we hardly had any TV channels, right? So you just had to kind of buy some space on your one, two or three TV channels. And that was it, you know, job done. You could go home early at five o'clock and spend time with the kids. Things have obviously got a lot more complicated. Uh, so in 1990s, we started to look at segmentation, different target audiences. Obviously, with the internet in 2000s, you could start doing much more one-to-one -one kind of communications and, and that kind of stuff. But now, with social media, it's not just you on send. It's like people are doing it all for you as well and connecting and, and everything like that. So it's a lot more complex. Um, and we have four really, really simple principles that help, uh, help drive uh, effective communication. So the first one is that we try and make all of our campaigns social at heart. And that's all, that sounds a little bit buzzwordy, um, but the, the, the simple lens that I put on this is that if an idea is good enough for me, me as an individual, not as a Coke person, to share with my friends, then, then, then it's a good idea. If it's a bit rubbish or whatever, it's not going to be social because the standards that I have uh, you know, are surely no much higher than the standards of, of everyone else has. So make it social at heart. Make it an idea that you, you would like to, to share with your friends, with your family and so on. Um, secondly, about in terms of, of, of media buying, um, we always try and start, rather than go, okay, we've got 60 million, how are we going to spend it? We try and develop ideas that start on stuff that we own. And obviously, we produce billions of um, products in China every year. Um, and so package, starting on the packaging is, is a very, you know, that's probably our most precious real estate and our most common real estate. So that's why, you know, for the last three years, two years now, we've done uh, what we call the share of Coke ideas. So with, uh, I mean, it was in the introduction with the, the Goethe Ping and the nickname bottles. Um, so starting with own media, um, obviously moving into earned, this is not particularly uh, radical and I think most people do it. I think, you know, we're, we're here about innovation, right? And I think this is awesome. So if you just forget everything that I just said for the last sort of half an hour, just remember this, um, which is what we call the 70-20-10 principle. So we deliberately plan, spend, you know, our money, our time, our resources, 70% of all of that on stuff that we know is working now. So it's kind of, we know that it works, we'll, we'll do it again. It's, you know, we know that we're going to get the results. We then spend 20% on stuff that is new. Um, so stuff that we don't know, we haven't particularly measured it, but it's new. We spend 20% of our resources uh, on that. And then we spend 10% on stuff that we think might work tomorrow. Um, so it's completely, so it forces us to, to take risks, it forces us to innovate. The trick in all this is obviously you have to measure it, right? If you don't measure any of this, um, then it's pointless. Um, so you've got to measure, you know, and if the 10% works, fantastic, you know, next year it'll become a 20% and then the, in you know, two years' time at a 70%. Um, but if it doesn't work, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's not a problem. But uh, learn from those mistakes. Don't you know, do them again and, and move on and so forth. But this 70-20-10 is really, really liberating because it allows us to innovate and it allows us to, to kind of go into spaces that um, we haven't necessarily done before. Final point, again, it's kind of obvious, I guess, but is uh, a principle we call of, of no dead ends. So we try and ensure that we have a system where, 
you know, if you come in on a piece of packaging or through a website or through, you know, a mobile promotion or, you know, through an experience at an event, whatever it is, whatever point you come in, you can, no one ever does this obviously, but you could if you so wished, to go all the way around uh, every single connection point and, and discover you know, everything that we're kind of offering. But you know, it's, it's amazing how pe people don't do that and actually um, when things are interesting and people want to find out more, um, allowing that system uh, makes it really, really um, strong. Um, so this, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a campaign that we ran last summer, um, hugely successful for us. Um, we've won, uh, obviously, grew our business a lot, won a lot of our awards, but you'll, you'll understand a few of those principles from that. So this was our Lyric Bottle uh, campaign from last summer. So just to explain to you, well, I think the case study does it anyway, but we basically put uh, song lyrics, like really famous song lyrics, on the sides of, of all of our Coke packaging as a way of people being able to express um, their emotions, their feelings. So if I was in love with my wife, I could go and share with her an I love you song. Um, and there were lots of those. It's China after all. Um, and, um, but then there was lots of stuff that, that followed onto it. So just have a look at the video. Share a Coke 2013 was one of the best summers with 20% volume growth and created amazing campaign records. Also, summer 2013 was hot, but this summer was cool. So how did we beat the most successful campaign ever? Grand launch of 2014 Coca-Cola Lyric Bottle. Why lyrics? Chinese youth lived with multiple pressures and feels isolated. They have trouble with self-expression in real life and keep most of their interactions online. Music is a powerful expressive medium that can help break these social barriers. So for summer 2014, we decided to speak in lyrics. Consumers express themselves every time they share a lyric coke. Moreover, we created a set of musicons to let young people easily express themselves in social networks. Throughout the summer, lyric cokes were everywhere. Highlight one, coke cheered on every Gaokao student with a lyric bottle. In 17 cities, in total we gave away 50,000 Gaokao lyric cokes. Highlight 2. Does the hottest Korean celebrity Kim love Lyric Cokes too? After a TV spot, Lyric Cokes exploded in headlines across social networks, collecting 25 million impressions. Highlight 3. For Chinese Valentine's Day, Lyric Coke witnessed the power of true love together with May Day. We hosted a romantic proposal event and May Day love concert, which received over 13 million impressions. Highlight 4. Create your own lyric bottle and share with your nearest and dearest. More than 5.6 million consumers created a truly one-of-a-kind Coke bottle by printing their names and favorite lyrics on bottles. Following the legendary 2013 nickname campaign, in 2014 Lyric Coke produced another success of mythical proportions. Coca-Cola was the fastest growing brand among all soda brands. Coke recruited 24 million non-users into loyal Coke frequent drinkers. Coca-Cola Lyric bottles were seen over 3.2 billion times. 3 million people participated in campaign activities. Coke World Cup Anthem became the most listened to song in China. 70% of consumers have shared a Coke. We generated nearly 100 million RMB ad value. For all of summer 2014, Lyric Cokes not only refreshed your thirst, but also let Chinese youth share happiness. Through heartfelt creativity, Lyric Cokes created a sensation among Chinese youth in 2014. And the campaign has won multiple awards and honors. Summer 2014, the world was ours. So, very, very successful campaign for us. Um, any idea what we're doing this year? No. Secret. Um, so, fi final point is about, um, you know, if we've got great stories, we spread them effectively, um, but obviously there needs to be a point to it. And, and this is about value. So, 
you know, in, in the old days, it was very easy. It was consumers and us. So it was like if we created value for our audience, you know, with products that they liked, uh, stories around them that they liked, then um, they would buy more from us and we would make more profit and fantastic, everyone's happy, right? Things are evolving. Um, and so we have sort of what we call value creators as well as uh, value influencers. Um, so for Coke, you know, we have a, you know, I won't go into it, but we have a sort of complex bottling system. So it's, it's kind of a, a, an extra layer there. But the point here is that we need to also deliver value, not just to consumers, not just to our partners, uh, but also to everyone around there. So, for example, our, our advertising agencies, you know, none of the stuff that we do is possible without our advertising agencies. So how do we create value for them, not just in terms of you know, paying them a fee, but in terms of helping them to grow as well. How do we um, create value uh, with, you know, with the government officials, with everyone that can have an influence around uh, our value system? Um, and that can include detractors, right? Um, people that there are a lot of people, obviously, you know, as, as food and beverage uh, professionals, but you know, there's, uh, as an industry, uh, we have a lot of detractors around it. But so how do we kind of engage with them in a positive way um, and, and, and turn things around? So it's not just about value, uh, about us and them, but also about influencers and, and creators. Um, and as an example of that, I'll just show you my final video of the day um, before lunch, which you can all go and eat soon. Um, but just a, a piece of film that we created, which, um, yeah, tell me what you think. lovely piece of film. So we, we engaged actually a, a Chinese artist uh, who'd never done commercial stuff before to kind of, you know, make that look like a, a Chinese painting. Anyway, um, stories uh, that, that are our currency, um, making them spread, making them liquid um, by making them social at heart, and then finally making them linked back to um, our objectives and, and every, all the influences around us. Uh, so that everyone gets uh, gets a dividend, everyone's a winner. So that's kind of what we do at Coke. Um, I hope that was useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. 大家有什么问题吗? Fantastic, lunchtime. Okay. <laughs> oh, one more question. We think that Coke is such a wonderful brand. Um, my name is Lucy. We know it's um, the He had image because it's about the soda. So, so it's about the functional wise. It cannot compete with the, the other RTC drink, like the tea or whatever. So one side you push the heavily on the emotion side to draw the people connection. But how to facing the challenges, people are really health awareness, concern of the, the drink. So how to face these kind of challenges? Yeah, I mean, interesting question. I think, you know, Coke is, uh, is, is a brand that's growing. Coke, the brand, is growing uh, very well in China. Um, but we like, we like to provide choice, right? So we, we have a lot of other uh, beverages as well. We have teas and we have orange juices and we have waters and, and loads and loads of different brands. Um, and I think uh, for us, it's, it, you know, uh, the Coke has, you know, the, the soda market is still doing extremely well, extremely well in, uh, in China and around the world. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's not about being ashamed about that. It's actually, you know, I love drinking Coke um, and a lot of people do. Um, but it's about providing those choices um, as well um, for people who, you know, different life stages and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. 
。还有其他问题吗 ？Okay, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. By the way, I love Coca-Cola very much.